Hello, and welcome back to The Small Game Show. First, I need to offer a warm welcome to everyone who's come on board from the educational Duck Armageddon video, and all the draw fee folks. It's the most popular video I've done, and was quite an exciting few days seeing the views and likes pour in. I've been periodically releasing things on YouTube since 2020, trying many different things, mainly for myself as a creative outlet, but getting some views has been nice. So thank you. But that does not stop the flow of small games, so join me once more to explore some small games from itch. Midnight Hot Swap Turbo is by Sir Milkman, creator of Parcel Punisher from Ludum Dare, and by the look of their itch page, an incredibly prolific small games developer. This game was made for the game maker's toolkit jam, and represents a type of arcade game that you do not frequently see in the mainstream these days. You're a tiny spaceship twisting and turning at high speeds through packs of similar ships, shooting them down as you do. Your right mouse button is your turbo, which locks you in to this higher speed with less cornering, but that has the benefit of letting you strafe the enemy, taking shots while you're locked into this path. When you run out of ammo, you gain more by simply hot swapping into an enemy craft and borrowing it for a while before crashing it and borrowing the next guys. All of these systems create a fast paced loop that you want to push at the boundaries of. Each game ends with your score being shown and you want to push the boundaries of that as well, trying to creep it higher and higher. Best that previous version of yourself with the knowledge gained from playing. 40 years ago this would have been at home in an arcade cabinet and is mechanically more deft than anything you would have found during that era. Each time you play you learn how the pack spawns a little more, learn which weapons you like and how you use them, and get a little further, get in a bit of a better high score. As you do go on playing, enemy spawns just seem to increase. Either that or my absolute inability to clear them out just left it growing, creating these huge packs to strafe around, to swap into, and to fly between. Like a meteor belt in a sci-fi show, I can just hear my crew saying no one makes it through alive, and often we didn't, but when bringing these simple mechanics together, there is something that's fun and uncomplicated to it. It becomes intuitive and playful. I love a game that's a tight group of mechanics well exemplified, and this is one. LCD Please is such an unusual little thing. I didn't really enjoy playing it personally, but that doesn't mean it's not interesting and worth talking about. Made by Lucas Pope of Obra Dim and Papers Please, this game takes the latter and creates an LCD game system version of it. LCD games were something that I played and completely forgotten about and had to do a Google to refresh my memory of them. They're those little handheld mono game machines that use an LCD display that has set parts of the background that it can use to display things, already pre-programmed little drawings that it can light up and show you something graphically. This means that they inherently have a design limitation with what you can graphically show instead of near limitless options when using pixels. And that's why I guess Lucas wanted to have a go at demaking their own famous game. It has this really cool display where you only have four buttons for interactions and two person and one to the main game, approve and deny. A person walks up, states who they are and then where they're from and you ask for their papers. You have to play a memory game of making sure that their image matches their papers as well as their name and where they are from, approving or denying entry, depending if you see a conflict there. The original Papers, Please is an examination of an authoritarian society with strict border controls and what it's like to be the poor, literally, sod manning the gates. You have to weigh your responsibilities to the state tied implicitly to your own ability to support yourself and family with the job, which of course you can lose, but you get paid for letting people in also. It's a game that's interested in power dynamics and how individuals, repressed in their own right, fit into these grand states and are weaponized. Now some of the nuance is lost when you strip down the mechanics to something so simple, but as I had the context of what it was based on, it had this haunting depersonalization effect. The stripped down graphics do a good job of representing the borderline and the faces of the people. They have this similar sort of stylistic look to the main game, who are slightly off kilter, instead of realistic representations, but this choice brings out a humanity to them. But now any back and forth, any interpersonality between you and these people is thrown out in the window. Instead, you're just left to approve or deny. There is an efficiency here that is quite scary. The actual downside of the game is that each human is made up of these stencils, which I found really hard to internalize. With the game essentially being a spot the difference game, with a memory element, it made it really hard to succeed. 
I would still recommend checking it out as this D-Mate really does show how hardware limitations, self-imposed or not, can fundamentally alter a game. What you can do, what's available to you as a developer. Liminal Gallery is today's closer. It's made by Ken Forrest and was put on my radar as he made Drone Delivery, one of my favourite games from the last Ludum Dere. Notably, this game is taking Viewfinder and experimenting with the core mechanics but for completely different ends. Instead of going for a tight puzzle game, it tries to experiment what it would be like to use its exploration mechanics with a much creepier aesthetic. The game works by allowing you to place photos onto the world and spawn it into a 3D space. These can be photographs with an exit door on them, which you can then place on the world, seeing it come alive in front of you. Or pieces that will help you traverse it over environmental puzzles. You need those stairs over there? Take this photo of them and put it there. This is then elevated by giving you a camera, which also means you can actually take photos of the world, you're not limited to the ones that the game just spawns in. Bringing a level of creativity to the puzzle mechanics, if you haven't actually played Viewfinder, this game serves as a great introduction to these core mechanics. But if you have played Viewfinder, still come to this game for its difference in aesthetics. Honestly, for how quickly this game has come out, I'm surprised at how well it works. It really managed to replicate the feeling of Viewfinder to an outstanding level, even if it's just missing some of the finesse of that game. I'm not saying that to be too critical, of course. Team size and time spent here mean that they're making very different end products with different purposes. But the creepiness elements with the actual aesthetic choices that are going on here, the physical places that this game is taking place in, are just so much more alien. Viewfinder was about diving into this shared created space from these scientists, luminaries, and then distort them all with placing photos on the landscape. This all starts to feel very different in Liminal Gallery, a horror landscape. Instead of an act of creation, it feels like you're engaging in an act of destruction, all the time being watched and judged. Finally, I want to give a shout out to Proximity. It's very early days for this game, so there's not loads to say, but it's made by Kane, whose game Waste Eater are featured on this channel, and I had to try it out, I really, really enjoyed Waste Eater. Inspired by Iron Lung, this game asks what it is like to explore a horror environment whilst wearing a VR headset that tells you the proximity of things, as well as what things in the environment are. So instead of actually having a representative 3D space, you look at something and it will say, there is a chair there, and it's 10 paces away or 10 meters away. But the twist of it is that this headset was made by a corporation that clearly wants to cover up what's happened here, showing a man covered in ketchup instead of whatever horrifying scene is actually there. It's such a fun concept that I can't wait to see what's expanded from it. So look forward to that on the channel when we get more. We've had a couple of games that we've talked about today that are using other games as inspiration. I want to talk about that for a second. I think the medium of games owe so much to other games of a similar sort, to the genre that it comes from. And we can see that with today's games. You get people trying similar mechanics and giving different effects. What can seem like copying really isn't. The end ideas end up so different and apart. And aside from a couple of instances, ideas in games aren't really copyrighted. And I think this is a good thing. It means places like Itch can thrive with experimentation, creating something greater than the sum of its parts. It really becomes a place where people are just trying things because the stakes are different. You haven't got huge corporations needing a profit. You haven't got to make the next biggest thing that's going to take up 60 hours, 100 hours and be the forever game for people. Instead, it can be these little tasters that you try out different things and see how it fits together. And who knows, in the end, with all that experience, you might actually be able to make a commercial product. Anyhow, that's enough for today. My name's been Billy. Peace.